Oh, hey, Zio. So I was thinking, um, maybe we should play some D and D. You up for it? I think that'd be great. But uh, just remember, there's three cardinal rules to playing Dungeons and Dragons that you must always follow. First one, you gotta be a nerd. Trust me, I'll be checking nerd cards at the door, so if you ain't got one, you need to go ahead and get out there, go get yours, or get your uh, new one updated, because I know they expire every, like, five years or something, you gotta go recertify. Secondly, no women allowed. I know, I know, we can't have girls at the table. I know some people want to try, but it's just not something that happens. This game is not for them. Number three, you need to have some kind of facial hair, like this. Uh, full beard, part beard, doesn't matter. Heck, you could have mutton chops or something. As long as you got hair up there, it's all that matters. So let's go ahead and uh, get this game started, shall we? Jokes aside, welcome. I'm Zio, and uh, this is Zio Gaming. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it now. Hit like, leave me a comment, talk about something. I don't care. We've been talking about Blizzard a lot lately. Um, so get your coffee if you hadn't already. Take a sip. Because mm. it's still early in the morning, and uh, yeah, I need it. But we've been talking a lot about Blizzard, and I thought we should take a break from all that because I saw this video by the BBC that was tweeted out a few days ago and uh, wanted to talk about it because this sort of thing rubs me the wrong way. This was what, back on the 13th. Uh, so yeah, it's it's been a good few days ago at this point. And uh, I just really hate it when people use stereotypes to further their uh, argument about something. It, it's just a weird thing. Uh, I, and this this video here is just all manners of wrong. See, we've got this woman here, and she's going to lecture us on what we're doing wrong in the games, and, and the game is for everybody, and it's not just for beardy nerds in the basement anymore, that sort of thing. I mean, uh, look at that. You want to be a little bit on the provocative side? That's, that's going to do it. Dungeons & Dragons is not just for a bunch of beardy boys in a basement. It's for everyone and anybody, which... Uh, I don't even know where to start. The fact that they use that as an argument all the dang time, it just drives me nuts. But uh, let's, let's, let's take a look at this and respond to it because uh, I really hate these kind of people. <laughs> no offense, but Dungeons and Dragons isn't just for nerds anymore. No offense, but uh, Dungeons and Dragons are only for nerds. Uh, no, but seriously, you want to play Dungeons & Dragons, chances are you've got a little nerd in you somewhere. It, to, or, in order to play a game about role-playing as a fantasy character in a world of magic and technology and other things that don't exist, there's probably a little bit of a geek in you somewhere. Because most people who aren't into any of that sort of thing, if they're not into sci-fi or fantasy or anything like that, Dungeons & Dragons really is not for them and they don't play it. I, I'm not going to lie. That, that That is the one thing I will go ahead and say, you know, when I was doing my three rules, nerdum is kind of a necessary element to play Dungeons & Dragons. So you can bring somebody in who isn't a nerd and bring out their inner nerd through Dungeons & Dragons. It's been done. I've done it. Um, I mean, heck, we played a couple of years ago with a bunch of friends. Uh, they were just like, hey, it'd be really cool to play Dungeons & Dragons. And I'm like... Sure, I can do something real quick, two, two hours or an hour to prep, and then we ran like an eight hour long campaign where I BS'd most of it <laughs> on the fly because I didn't really have the time to prep and they were only in for that night, but uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, at least two of those people in the group, they're not nerds, they're not gamers, they wouldn't be anything like that, but they really did enjoy it and it brought out their inner nerd. But, uh, yeah, you, you kind of have to have a little bit of an element of nerdum somewhere in your soul in order to enjoy Dungeons & Dragons. I'm, or at least that's my opinion on it. So, 
60 seconds, one opinion. One opinion that's probably oh, oh, so terribly wrong. It's not just for a bunch of beardy boys in a basement. It's that's great, because that's the stereotype that I hate oh so much. The fact that we're only, if you're a nerd or a geek, you have to be a bearded boy in the basement, which is kind of weird, because for one, I'm pretty sure boys don't grow beards, but that's, that's splitting hairs. Men grow beards, though, and teenagers, they can grow beards, I think. Yeah, teenagers can do it. But uh, as for boys, they, they don't. So, the, I mean, that's splitting hairs or whatever. But, uh, it's yeah. Everybody and anybody. <sighs> okay, so the argument it is Dungeons & Dragons is only for nerds in their parents' basements, whatever, that sort of thing. And we apparently have this gatekeeping where we keep everybody out. We keep all the women's out. We keep anybody who doesn't look like us out. We we keep everybody out, apparently, when we, we don't. But that's the argument that they have always set up for themselves. It's a straw man where they just say, we keep them out. <laughs> and it's hilarious because we don't keep them out. It's so social. The most social game you have to play, in fact. All you need is a few friends and a dungeon master or game master. Okay, so this video is obviously a video made by normies for normies. Otherwise, you wouldn't be... Look, if you were talking to the Dungeon and Dragons community, if you were talking to the tabletop role-playing community, I don't think you'd be saying out dungeon master or game master. You'd be using DM, GM, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, you talk about player characters as PCs, um, non-player characters as NPCs, things like that. You don't really say it all out because you, you don't need to. You've got abbreviations for all this stuff, and everybody knows what it means if they're in the community. So this video is obviously written by normies for normies who don't actually play Dungeons & Dragons. Just going to go ahead and say that. But uh, it, it drives me nuts that these people feel like they have to drive home this thing. They've got to whack it on home that we, as the community, keep them out. Dungeons & Dragons is a game that has always been for everyone. Um, there's never been an issue with anybody wanting to play it. However, back in the day, before geekdom was cool, Dungeons & Dragons was looked down on. You know, if you were living in places where I live... Where, where there, it's a full, huge Christian area, things like Magic the Gathering was subjected to the whole, oh, you're summoning the devil kind of stereotype, or you're, you're a devil worshiper. Dungeons and Dragons received the exact same treatment. On top of that, because it was, you know, a nerd thing, people like this lady here would have made fun of people like myself. They would have bashed us. They would have told us that we're nerds. They would have called us names. They would have bullied us. You know, and I'm sure plenty of other people out there who know what I'm talking about understand exactly where I'm coming from. Trying to get a woman or a girl involved in D&D was very, very hard back in the day because it was not the cool thing to do. And uh, it was very uncool to be in it, which is why you only had nerds and geeks playing together kind of run the game and tell you a story. Yeah. Anyway. It's this wonderful escapism from real life, like acting or writing, but you're doing it as a group. Yes, that is so true. Um, but yeah, when it comes to Dungeons & Dragons, you, you're playing a story. You've got a GM or a DM who's, who's pretty much set up a campaign for you. you. You make your characters. You create anything you want. I mean, you, you've got a player handbook here, right? This is the fifth edition one, right? And in it, you have instructions on how to do pretty much a lot of things. You, know, you want to be a human? Be a human. That, that's totally up to you. If you want to be an elf or something, that, that's, that's totally available too. You've got Dragonborn. I mean, these are just examples from the uh, handbook itself. And there's much more than that. I mean, the, the handbook here gives you like five, six, or seven races to choose from straight off if you've never played before. 
and all sorts of other things from classes like sorcerers, um, you know, wizards, and other things as well. And, and it gives you a lot there just to start off with your adventure. But when you start digging in further into the thing, and of course this video is going to be linked in the description because I don't know if I'm going to, I'm probably not going to go through the entire one minute. I'm just going to rant about a lot of things that are in this video because I've already seen it. You can go watch it yourself because there's this whole thing with, you know, people like the BBC claiming things and stuff. So I, I don't want to go too far into it. But, uh, you know, you could be literally anything you want. You can make any kind of backstory. You're not limited to what is in the player's book either. Um, I mean, heck, there was a guy who, was, who I talked to at one point. And he's like, I just want to be a grizzly bear. Like a sentient talking grizzly bear. Is that allowed? Because I tried getting in with the group. They wouldn't let me do it. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I will write you up something, set it up for you, make you some things out, and we can go from there. You know, and there's a thing also with DMs and stuff where there's, there's different kinds of people. You've got people who, you know, take books like this or, or the Dungeons Master Handbook or the Monster Manual or whatever, and, and they religiously live by these rules. If a rule tells you you can do something, you can do it. If it doesn't state that you can do something, you can't do it. However, I'm one of the other kinds of DMs who like to change things up. I mean, I for the most part, will follow the rules of 5th edition. But if something you know unique comes up or something, we'll change things up a little bit. Uh, if you want to be something that doesn't actually have a class to it or something, because you can go online and find all sorts of classes, uh, you know, all sorts of races that you can be, and other material that is out there between these, you know, like the three basic books and all the supplementing materials and what other players have dreamed up. You know, there's a lot that you can do with it. And, uh, of course, that is totally up to what your DM is comfortable with doing, of course. But uh, somehow I feel like we got off track. Socializing issues, mobility issues, to anxiety. What, what was this? But you're doing it as a group. And it can be really good for people with anxiety, socializing issues, mobility issues, to kind of play somebody else and experiment with their personality. Okay. Anyway, where, where, where's, where's this? This, this is part. It's got its problem. Like most games, to be honest, with diversity and inclusion, but there's groups. Remember, D and D has its problems with diversity and inclusion. You know, never mind that whatever character you decide to play can be black, or white, or yellow, or green, or, or whatever. You could be a goblin. You can be an elf. You can be a gnome, a half orc, full orc. Uh, you can become a barbarian, a bard, a monk, um, a fighter, some kind of roguelike thing, a druid, a spellcaster. You can sling spells. You can wield a lightsaber. You can do all sorts of things in this game. But it has a problem with diversity and inclusivity. See, the problem with that, there is no problem with diversity in this game. You can literally be anything and if what you want to be isn't available somewhere like you can't find it online that somebody's already drawn up or set up stats for or anything like that and and it's not in the handbooks or the supplemental material i urge you to talk to your dm and say hey look man or girl or whatever or it this is what i kind of want to do but i can't find anything on it can you work with me to make something happen so i could do this your DM says no, go find another DM. Chances are, if you and your DM have a good relationship, they're going to be like, yeah, sure, we'll see how we can work this in there. You know, it doesn't matter whether your character is gay, straight, bi, whatever, you can do that if that's what you want. You know, you have the ability to write your own backstory. Now, the game gives you backstories, it gives you all these past things and other stuff that you can add, you know, quickly. But you can create your own. You know, um, one of my favorite things when and if I ever get to play 
because I think back when I last played, something like a, a noble thief wasn't really a thing as, as a backstory kind of deal. And my character would always be sort of part of nobility. However, he had this... He wasn't satisfied with what he had, so he picked up thievery off to the side. And even though he was a nobleman, at night he would sleuk off somewhere and steal from other nobles and other people, you know, and stuff like that. And it got up his, because that's just how my character was. You know, that wasn't, that's not an actual, you know, backstory or class or anything else like that in the game, but it's something I've created. You could do that. That's what's so great about this game. It doesn't have an inclusion issue either because people can play with anybody. You just got to find a cohesive group who are willing to take you on. You know, um, as long as you're not causing problems for the group, because believe it or not, there are people who just can't get along. You can't force people to play with you. That's a problem. You got to be able to get along with these people. But, uh, you know, there are groups out there, and then, of course, there's other things like Roll20, as crappy as they are, but, you know, that you can get on and play online and stuff like that. And you, you can easily find a group now in the current day and age to play if you really, really have it, if you got the time and want to. So Dungeons & Dragons doesn't have a diversity or an inclusion issue either. That, that's just something that you all have cooked up to try and insert you into this. Which is another issue with all this because of things like Big Bang Theory and I guess Stranger Things and other media and stuff. All these people like, you know, this lady here feels like they've got to get in on the ground floor. And they've got to get in on this and they get upset when we don't want to play with them because they're uh, crazy up in the head when it comes to things like this because... I have a feeling, unless she's got a whole group that talks like this, I don't exactly want to have one of my players go, no, that just doesn't seem inclusive. Why is that NPC not like this? Why is she, why is the NPC a dude? Or why is the NPC this instead of that? I don't have time for that. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that. And I would not include this kind of a person in my group. I'd be like, look, it's not working out. You're going to have to go find another group. You can't stop the game every 20 seconds because, you know, this person isn't gay or this person isn't, you know, two-spirited or whatever it is, and you feel like they should be for some odd reason. Or because I'm not constantly, you know, addressing the fact that your character is X when it has no pertinent matter to the ma or doesn't have anything to do with the matter at hand to begin with but you still feel like I need to address it every 10 seconds that might be why these people feel like there's a diversity and inclusion issue because for the most part the people who are already playing the game you know the people you ostracized for years and called nerds and didn't want anything to do with don't want to play with you because of that that's why you have to go find other groups who are all like that, who actually know how to play the game, to play with them. But for the most part, the game doesn't have that big of an issue. And I have ranted on about this a little bit too long than what I meant to do. So uh, I'm going to end it here. The link for this tweet, of course, is down in the description if you want to go check it out. And I will talk to you later. See ya. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment, smash that like button, and always subscribe for more. And of course, there are other videos floating around somewhere on the screen, so click one of those and see if you can find something that uh, suits your fancy. Till then, I'll see you later. Bye.